This is a project that I'm working on of a smartwatch with OLED display, Bluetooth connection and that uses the Atmega 328 chip, the same microchip that the Arduino is using. For now it has a few features, but I'm improving this design each day. First of all, it has a real-time clock IC on the back, so it can display time, the day and the date. You could set the time in the menu if you want. This chip also has a temperature sensor, so we could also display the temperature on the top part of the screen. It has a buzzer on the back that you could set to mute in the menu as well. It receives notification from an Android smartphone using a Bluetooth connection and displays on the screen from which application is the received notification. Also, that notification gets stored till you remove it in the menu and the mail icon will disappear from the screen. Using a voltage divider and the 1.1V internal voltage reference, we can see when the battery is low and show that on the screen, so we could know when to plug the charging USB connector. And by the way, this board has a charging circuit for 3.7V LiPo batteries with the USB connector. It also has an FTDI chip, so we could program the board directly with a USB cable. Ok, so this project is not yet 100% ready, and it is a very long project. In this video I will show you what and how I've made till now. Making just one video with this project will require a very long video, but in order to learn better, I will make a few parts, and I will also talk about the mistakes that I've made. Before we start, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB, which upgraded their factory so now they can offer 5 pieces of common 2 layer PCBs with a production time of only 24 hours, and that without any additional fees. So for that, prototyping become faster than before, but for the same low price. Upload the Gerber file, select the PCB settings, and order high quality PCBs for a few dollars. What's up my friends, welcome back. As I said in the intro, this project is far from ready. But the code is already very long, the board has a lot of parts and there are still places for improvements and designing the 3D case. That's why we'll go step by step, make a few videos and show you all that this board can do. In this first video I'll show you the main features that the smartwatch has for now. First of all, a very low power usage, only 2mA when in sleep mode. With this kind of 100mA battery, this should last more than a full day. The board has a charging circuit with a USB connector that could charge a 3.7V battery in a short period of time. Using Bluetooth connection between this smartwatch and the smartphone, you will get a message each time you receive a new tweet, a WhatsApp message, a new mail, Instagram notification and so on. Once you receive the notification, the new mail icon will stay on the screen till you reset all the notifications. If you push the middle button, we enter a menu where you can set the time, see the notifications, silence the buzzer and so on. The alarm part of the menu is not yet ready, and later we will see why. It can also measure and display on the screen the battery level, show the real time and date using the real time chip, show the temperature and in the menu be able to set the time, silence the buzzer or see the received notifications. So let's begin. First of all, this is the schematic that I've made for now. But I'm sure that I will change some parts in future videos. So make sure you always check the description below to see which is the most updated version for this smartwatch. Once I was satisfied with this schematic, in EasyEDA I've created a new board and placed each component where I wanted. I route all the tracks and I add two big vias on the top and the bottom part of the PCB. Those one will be the holes for the watch belt. This is the final design. I have holes for the display, the Bluetooth module and the push buttons on the side. I fill the board with copper, I run the design rule check and I save the project. Now I go to export Gerbers and that will open a new tab. Here I select order from GLC PCB and that will open a new window. Once the Gerber file is uploaded, I select the amount of 10 PCBs, 1.2mm width for the board and a green color. That will cost me only $2. I click checkout and now the shipping to Spain is only 6 more dollars. Ok, after that I receive the boards in a week. Let me show you the parts of this new board. I say new because this is already the second version. 
the first version doesn't have space for the watch belt, neither the voltage divider so we could read the battery value. I've also placed an extra LED that we could use to show different notifications or when the battery is low. Another new thing about this board is the use of an FTA module directly on the board. The first version didn't include that chip, so I had to use an external FTA programmer like this one to program the board. Ok, so let's inspect the new PCB. In the middle, we have the Atmega 328 chip in a QFN format. Soldering this kind of chip is not that difficult. With a little bit of practice you can easily do that. Then we have the pads for a small 60 MHz crystal. Then here we have the FTDA chip and 3 push buttons on the side. On the right bottom corner we have some pads for the SPA port, in case the chip that you use doesn't have a bootloader and you have to burn one. See my other videos on how to burn a bootloader to the Atmega 328 chip below of this video. Ok, on the top part we have space for a small LED connected to a digital pin and we could use this LED for any notification that we want. Now on the back, the biggest part is the real time clock. This is the DS3231 chip that gives us the real time, the day of the week, the date and the temperature. I've also placed a very small buzzer for sound notifications and the alarm. On the top part we have the ward pads just in case the FTDI chip fails. Now all the rest of these components here on the bottom side of the board are the components for the battery charge process and for the discharge protection. This is the same circuit that this small module has. I've just used the same circuit on my PCB. On the right side we can see the pads for a USB connector. And on these two small pads I soldered the 3.7V battery and that's pretty much it. Ok guys, so now below, as always, you have links for my webpage electronoops.com where you could see a more step by step tutorial with more photos and more details. Before I start soldering I have to say something important. The Gerbers you download below are ok, but unfortunately this PCB has some errors that I've made by mistake. There are two main errors. First, the USB pads for VCC and ground are reversed and the interruption pin from the real time clock is not connected to the microcontroller. That means that I can't use the USB connector, so I can't charge the board or program it by USB. But I know that the circuit works, because on the board from the first version I have a good USB connector and the same charging circuit. I plug the USB connector and the battery is charging and the red LED is turning on. When the battery is full the blue LED will turn on. But don't worry, I've already corrected these errors on the final Gerber file that you could download from below, so everything is perfect now. As for the interruption pin from the real time clock, well without that pin I can set an alarm. Well I could set it but without the interruption from that pin I can put the chip into sleep mode in order to save power. In the next part of this project I will add the alarm feature to this smartwatch. Ok, now soldering this kind of chip might be a little bit tricky. First I clean the pads with alcohol. Then I add a very thin layer of solder paste. I insist very thin layer of solder paste. I also add some solder paste on the 60 MHz crystal pads, the R4 resistor, the R7 resistor, the C7 capacitor and the C3 capacitor as well. These are the basic configuration of the Atmega 328 chip. Now using some tweezers I start placing all the components. The white dot on the PCB will tell you which is the first pin of that component, so be careful not to put it backwards. Now I hit the hot air gun and start reflowing the components. I first solder the crystal, the resistors and capacitors and then the chip. Make sure that the chip is well centered. After the reflow is complete, I examine the chip with the macro lens of my camera to see if the pins are well soldered. If not, just add a little bit of flux and then pass the iron over the pins. Before we connect power to this chip, you should check for shorts with a multimeter. Everything seems ok, so now I solder 5 wires to the ward port. To these wires I will connect the external FTDA programmer to test if the chip is working. I upload a very simple code that will write a counter to the serial monitor. If I receive the data that means that the chip is working. And as you can see here on the serial monitor I receive the counter each second so everything is ok. Now I can solder the rest of the components, but I won't solder those ones that have errors. 
since the USB connector is not working, I won't solder the FTI programmer and the charging circuit on today's video. But I soldered the real-time clock on the back, the buzzer and the rest of the needed resistors and capacitors. Have the schematic in front of you while soldering in order to know each value of each resistor and capacitor. On the front part I soldered the resistors, the LED on top of the board and the 3 push buttons on the side. Be careful, this voltage divider here must have a 2.2K and a 6.8K ohms resistor, otherwise you will have to change those values in the code. I make another test, and if everything is ok, I now solder the OLED display on the SQRC pins here in the middle of the board. Don't solder the Bluetooth module yet. We have to solder this module after we upload the code, since it uses the RX and TX pins. Now connect the external FTDA programmer and upload the final code that you could find below. Now the code is very long and is still not perfect, so I won't explain that step by step for now. The code has comments on each part, so make sure you read all those comments. And if you don't understand something, leave a question below or on my Q&A forum. Now I solder the Bluetooth module and the board is ready. I finally solder a 3.7V battery on the back and the smartwatch turns on. Ok, now let's see what it can do. The OLED display right now is turned off, since the watch is into sleep mode in order to save power. I press the bottom or the top buttons, but nothing happens. But if I press the middle one, the OLED display turns on for 10 seconds and it will show the day, the time, the temperature, the battery level and the date. It could also display a mail icon or the alarm icon, but only after I receive any notification or if I set a new alarm. Now once again if I press the bottom or the top buttons, nothing happens. But if I long press the middle button, I enter a menu. Now this menu is a bit crappy. I first designed some icons like these ones, but this only made the code bigger and occupy almost 100% of the chip memory. That's why I've decided to use text instead of icons. On the menu you could set the time, see the notifications, set an alarm, but this option won't work for now and finally set the buzzer to mute. I select this final option and as you can see now the menu turned into sound and now the push buttons have no beeps anymore. Ok, I press this menu another time and now the buttons have a beep once again. I now go in the menu and I select set time. This will go to another menu. I first set the hour, the minute and the seconds. Then I go to the next page and I set the date. I set the day, the month and each number of the year. Now I go to the next page and I can select the day of the week. Select the day and click the middle button and the data is now saved. Now on the front screen the new real time is displayed. Now I get into the menu once again. I now select notifications. Here I can see how many messages I've received from Twitter, Whatsapp, Instagram, personal mail or YouTube. I can clear all the values or if I click each one separately, I can clear only that value. I could select back and go to the previous menu. Now as you can see right now all notifications are zero. So let's connect to our smartphone. I've already made a few videos where I show you how to get data from the smartphone using the HC06 Bluetooth module. See those videos below in the description. I didn't use an app that I've made myself. Instead, I've downloaded this awesome app called Notiduino from Jenny Studio and thank you very much for this app. You have a link for this below. Install the app on your Android smartphone. Open the app and select the plus button. Now select from which app you want to receive notifications. I select Twitter. Now open this Twitter label and go into values. Here you have to insert what you want to send to the watch each time the Twitter app will give you a notification. In this case I send 10 string characters and then a jump line and then a 23. So in the Arduino code I use the serial int function and if I detect a 23 then I increase the Twitter notification by 1. I do the same for all the apps such as WhatsApp, YouTube and the mail but using other numbers. These numbers are also here at the beginning in the code. So if you change the numbers on the app you have to change these numbers here as well. Ok, so now the smartwatch is sleeping. But I've placed interruptions so every time I press the middle button or I receive something, the chip will wake up. Now activate Bluetooth on your smartphone. Search for devices. 
when the HC06 is found, pair to it using 1234 or 0000 password. Now open Notiduino. Click the Bluetooth icon and connect to the HC06. The Bluetooth LED should stop blinking. Now select this notification on off and enable notifications. Ok, we are now ready. I get another smartphone and I log into my personal Twitter. I now send a message to this other smartphone. And there you have it. Each time I send a Twitter message, I get the amount of tweets on the screen of the smartwatch for 5 seconds. Even if I don't see the message in those 5 seconds, when I turn on the screen, I have a mail icon on the corner. So if I go to notifications, I can see that now I have a few notifications from Twitter. And I can reset the value. The watch has a few more features. Showing when the battery is low with this icon here on the corner or by turning this small LED on on the top of the board. So that's it guys. This is how my smartwatch works for now. I'm working on a few improvements. Such as placing a MOSFET to the VCC pin of the Bluetooth module. In this way, I could turn the Bluetooth off if I just want to use the watch as a normal watch, and by that I can save power. As you can see with the Bluetooth module, it needs around 4mA and without the Bluetooth module only 2mA, so that could double the lifetime of the battery. I will also implement a stopwatch because that's a nice feature to have. Once I receive version 3 of this board, I will also be able to implement the alarm where the buzzer will beep for 1 minute when the alarm time is reached. Feel free to download the good version of this PCB below in the description and also the schematic, the easy EDA project and the final code. As I said before, the code is not perfect yet, but I hope that will teach you something new. The good board will have working charging process and be able to program it by USB. Please stay tuned for future updates of this project. Check the details on electronoops.com and consider supporting me on Patreon. I hope that you like this video and if so, make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.